So the other day I awoke to a major controversy that was going on between the community and Void Interactive, but this time it was over a developer that was leaving the company. From what I understand, he was leaving because of personal reasons, but apparently Void Interactive didn't pay the stuff that he was working on, or at least that's what I was getting from a lot of people. There were a bunch of other people that were basically saying how much they're completely like disconnected from the community because they say that they shafted me and now Easy Street's out the door. It's just a mess. It's just a mess. A lot of people were asking me to talk about this situation so i thought okay well if i'm gonna talk about it i'm gonna make sure i got all the facts and you know when i got the information there was just a lot of stuff that was unclear as to what's actually going on so let's go ahead and take it from the top so where i believe this all started was on april 25th where he just posts my heart to give context this was during the time that a lot of youtubers and streamers were literally playing the pvp event and this like really gave ready or not a really bad reputation i mean it's not like it wasn't bad but before, but now they were on quite a bit of a stage for a lot of people to see so it's very understandable as to why he would be in the way that he is and how he feels april 27th over on the discord easy street admits that he hasn't been working with the project for over two to three months so he didn't know how void would respond so i read that and thought oh well he's still on payroll even though he's been absent from his post there were a lot of people that were telling me otherwise that he had left the job three months prior but that's not actually true i talked to the man himself and he said that he officially left yesterday yeah so i was correct in my thinking but these other people were incorrect because he said that uh he stopped being active with void because of personal reasons things that are going on outside of the internet he formally quit yesterday so yeah i thought i'd clear that up may 4th he posts on twitter saying very many mixed feelings these 24 hours i'm not gonna lie i actually asked these uh if he would elaborate on what he meant by that and he said i had mixed feelings about leaving it's very bittersweet so in other words he didn't want to leave because i'm sure he thought that they had something special but when a game is getting a lot of criticism at the moment and he isn't exactly involved with the game right now i'm sure his dms weren't exactly silent may 5th the mother load he's dropped a gigantic thread on twitter that we will be going through there's quite a bit to read here so uh buckle up just to give you full context <clears throat> hi time to clear some stuff up yes I am leaving Void. Sadly, I spent the last few weeks mulling it over, and it's really the right thing to do for me and my family. No, this was not a conspiracy by higher-ups as part of a push towards a siege-like PvP, as stated previously. I haven't worked with them for months, so my best guess is that they wanted to show off what they were working on, and PvP is more complete. Just a guess. I was not fired. I was not forced out. This is literally 100% my decision, based on the circumstances at the moment. My health is fine. My family is fine. I have not suffered a hard attack or any severe cardio issues while i do have a congenital heart defect the my heart tweet was purely metaphorical for context he tweeted it on april 25th during the time that all the streamers and youtubers were playing the pvp event you know the very one that gave the game and its crew a very negative reputation but yeah continuing on i just simply don't have the time anymore i moved out of my parents place i graduated college i got married i had a kid wow mad respect for easy street right there 2019 was intense for me but i don't want to blame my family for being the the reason why i'm not involved anymore because then people will start targeting them for retribution and because personal reasons are not the only reasons why i left being such a public figure within a company puts a huge strain on you very true after the last tweets were fired off i listened to what people said hearing i paid money because ease is in it puts a huge boulder on your shoulders the writing was on the wall for me if the game does poorly i'm an easy target for a scapegoat and or a reason for people to dismiss the team oh but well, they're just a bunch of modders anyway who would have trusted them i don't want Really need to feel guilty about that i put a shit ton of effort into this game i spent 60 hours a week on it on top of school for a period of time literally all day in front of a computer i became nocturnal to adapt to the oceana locale of the team yeah so for those of you that don't know void interactive the main team lives in new zealand so in order for you to actually be in daytime with them you have to stay up until like three in the morning in order to actually you know see the content that they're actually dropping which is kind of something that i was doing for a little bit but anyways yet i was low on the totem pole and doing ui things not even memeing here yeah from what i understand easy street was really good with ui especially in swap 4 i think that was like his main thing but yeah moving on despite doing more than just programming i also did community engagement co-wrote a level design bible interesting helped assign the game features wrote about a third of more of the game systems architecture assisted with giving direction to voice actors i remember him talking about that etc but he wasn't the director he had a bigger say than most of the other contractors but 
he was still just a contractor himself. So even though Easy Street brought a lot of things to Void Interactive, they still treated him as just a contractor. At least that's his opinion here. For example, I wrote a scripted gameplay trailer centered around the port level. He says here that he pushed hard for this, but I was shut down. I still don't think the trailer came out as good as it should have been, which I agree. To be honest, I actually just wanted to see actual gameplay. I didn't want to see, you know, cuts here and there. I didn't like that. But anyways, I was told to stay off of the public Discord and Reddit. The situation is incredibly frustrating for me because despite voicing my thoughts about how to write the ship, they were ignored. It's like everyone lives in a bubble where they ignore Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and Discord. And I don't think that that's the right way to do things. It's the right way to piss people off, I'll tell you that. I posted a video from Big Fry TV, what am I, chopped liver? And said something to the effect of, while he is being a bit hyperbolic, he has a few good points like X, Y, and Z. And I got chastised by management about posting videos that kill morale. That's an interesting way of thinking, Mr. Developer Man. I'm not trying to shit talk Void here at all. There are incredibly talented people working there. The concept they have for the game is awesome. The artwork that people haven't seen is incredible. Even looking at the old screenshots of stuff we made and later got scrapped, they were incredibly high quality. I learned a ton from working with these guys. The people directing it are absolute masters of their art form. Oh, one other thing. I probably ruined my reputation amongst game developers here for letting all of my skeletons out of the closet, but I want to re-emphasize that I want Void to succeed, don't we all? With that in mind, I have to turn to what is probably the worst, darkest part of this saga, the money. I don't get paid a regular wage. I get paid only in commission, but at the same time, I'm not privy to how many sales they've had. I'm sure the game is sold pretty well, just judging by the Discord number, but we don't have a physical number to actually look at. But anyways, or how much money is made. I have no idea if they're being truthful or not with the money they owe me. Apparently, neither do the apartment complexes because I was blackballed from getting an apartment with void money alone. The management refused to have an accountant certify that what I was getting was legitimate. The response I got was, those complexes are stupid. I had to stay in an extended hotel for six months until I could get a full-time job that paid me a real income. Sounds really bad. Pulling gigabytes of assets on hotel internet was not fun. Is that why you had really bad connections? I thought it was just because you lived in Florida. The only reason I had a somewhat stable income was because I sold some of my commission for a flat amount of money, but I was basically job surfing for a while. I'm still owed the rest of the money. They refused to sell it, citing a lack of funds. Again, I have no idea if this is true because I don't know how much money they have. Part of the contract stipulates that they can deny a sale for any reason, and I have no idea if this was intentional or just a really bad error on their part. But they actually never signed anyone's contracts. This was the legal issues I alluded to for why the gameplay trailer was delayed. Oh, you don't say. That and the scope was enormous. When everyone found out that their contract was never signed, there was a miniature strike for like a month. Wow. Infighting within Void Interactive. Oh, shh. That, and when they signed us on, the projected release date was November 2018. A topic for another day. No, I want to fucking know. I want to know that. Easy bit of tell me. But they didn't change anyone's commission amount to match the increased amount of time. I think the most fucked up thing is that the new hires as of late 2019 are all paid on fixed salaries. So the hell of living in a hotel is uniquely the experience of mine. Anyway, that's enough. I just don't want to be the scapegoat for a game that goes wrong when I don't have the time to do so. And I'm not even being paid to be it. So the whole debacle with him not getting paid was redacted shortly after. From what I understand, Void sent a confusing message to Ease, so he initially took it as they're not going to pay him, but there was just a big misunderstanding that boiled down to Void paying Ease for all the work that he's done aside from those past three months. So what I take away from this is a number of things. Number one, Easy Street doesn't want to handle the pressure of being a developer, especially if the game doesn't do well. Not saying that Ready or Not is going to be a flop, but we'll really have to see on that that one. Two, because of time zones, it made working on the game with the team to be difficult for him because you would literally have to screw up your sleep schedule in order for you to actually talk to them. Three, from Easy Street's perspective, he felt that they weren't treating him like a part of the team, even though he went above and beyond what his contract asked for. They treated him as just that a contractor. So any input that Easy Street had to make the game better was just ignored. That's very unfortunate. And number four, the whole thing with the money situation. I really like it when developers actually get paid, you know? They gotta eat. And for him to like struggle with that is just kind of like, what the heck? It's like I thought Void Interactive had an investor. Like what's going on here? I'm pretty sure with all the pre-orders they had a shit ton of money. I mean, 
whoa, whoa, what the hell? Good thing they got Easy Street's stuff figured out here because that could have been a lawsuit waiting right there. But uh, yeah, the last thing that I want to say before I go is that I think I might know why Ease wasn't taken as serious as we would have liked him to. Ease might not remember, but I do. There were two instances where he screwed up. I really don't believe that it was intentional, but I think it was enough to put Ease on the devs bad side. The first one I remember vividly was when the trailer didn't come out in June and July. So Ease thought to quell a lot of people's fears, he put out an announcement that they were pushing it back to August. And towards the end of August, when the trailer was nowhere to be seen, he apologized. The devs never actually told him anything. He just figured that they were going to push it back a month and redacted his statements. So you won't be able to see them on the Discord anymore, but I still have a screenshot somewhere if you go going past videos of what he said. So that was a big one that got a lot of people mad. Um, I can't recall the second one, but I know it was pretty big too. Like you'd have to go back and watch some of my videos to find it, but I know there was a second one. I just can't, I just can't think of it off the top of my head. But yeah, this is just a thought as to why I don't think they took him seriously. Cause at the time he was just hired and he was saying a bunch of stuff that flew in the face of what the devs actually stood for. Might've been the one reasons as to why the devs went like ridiculously quiet. Cause after the whole debacle, Grunter stopped talking on Reddit. Um, Rairo would come out every now and then, but Ease was like the last one to talk to us until about about three months ago again this is just me thinking out loud here but that's what it kind of felt like back then it still kind of feels like now well if there's any good news to come out of this it's the fact that after he let his story out a lot of people started to send messages towards easy street asking him to hire him because easy street is a big asset to any game that he goes to in my opinion so if he decides to go to games like uh, you know ground branch uh, i wouldn't mind you know i'd like to hit him up and be like yo dog whenever you're done taking a break and you decide to go back to gaming i'll tell your story so that is what happened the other day what are your thoughts? I honestly don't think it's as bad as what happened with the PvP event, but it's definitely eye-opening. So yeah, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, share, and comment. Check out my Patreon if you feel like, uh, you know, helping the channel out. And uh, yeah, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.